How's it going there, YouTube? Welcome back to the Nightbreaker channel. Um, today we're going to hang this axe head. We're going to get it shaped up here real quick. Take care of some of the pitting and the edges and stuff. And then we have a really nice, extra beautiful uh, red elm handle from Kellinger uh, that we're going to hang it on. And I'll post a link down below to his channel and his um, handle website. And if you like what you see here, you can get yourself one. These things are gorgeous, super easy to work with. They feel amazing in the hand. Um, I can't talk enough about how nice they really are. And uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed this one and plan on purchasing more in the future. Definitely. Check the description for his link. This is a tool I've mentioned before and showed you guys before, I think. This is a Shinto saw rasp. That's the coarse side, and this is the fine side. Um, a must, if you work with wood, in really any capacity at all that much. Um, it's just an excellent tool for shaping, cleaning up edges, what have you. It does leave a, a coarse grain when you're done with it, but nothing too bad that you can't hit it with a sander and straighten it out. Excellent tool. Highly recommended. I'm not Amazon affiliate or anything like that, but I'll post a link to the uh, Shinto Saw Rasp down in the description if you're interested. <laughs> While I realize that everybody's got their own methods for shaping handles and shaping eyes for um, heads and whatnot, this is just how I do it. If you don't agree with the things I do, then that's fine too. I'd, I'd love to see your method. Maybe I'll learn something. I'm always up for learning something, as we all should be. But after I hit it with the saw rasp, I just go ahead and hit it with the old orbital. Um, a little cheap black and decker orbital does everything I needed to do and I hit it with um, 60 grit as you saw just to really remove the coarse um, grain and shavings and stuff like that and smooth it out just enough but still remove material at the same time the whole purpose for this is to make the handle fit inside the eye of the head As you can see, it's just about there, and it's time to cut the kerf. Um, while Killinger handles are highly easy to work with, very nice, thin, feel great in the hand, excellent quality handles. Cutting the kerf was a little bit of a challenge for me, just because I hadn't done it before, and I don't think I necessarily have the proper tools for doing it, but uh, regardless, we got it done. Right here, I'm just checking the depth, how deep I want the wedge to go, and just going to cut down to that point. But uh, you could really screw up a handle cutting this kerf if you're not careful. So take your time, measure things, look at things, see about where your eye is going to line up, see if you have enough kerf there to hold a wedge and hold the head on yeah just take your time don't get in a rush doing this this is not a race also just remembered to mention that 
if you don't think you've removed enough material and your head still won't fit on the uh, handle, cut your kerf. If you have an uncurfed axe handle, I don't know if that's the proper terminology, um, cut your kerf because that's going to give you a little bit more room. That gap there will close up and allow a little bit more room for the head to fit on there. So, think about that before you go removing too much material. I don't know that you can necessarily remove too much. I mean, I guess you could. <laughs> I guess you could remove too much, but um, again, take your time. It'll get there. If you've never hung an axe or a hammer or anything like that, um, this is how it's supposed to be done. You don't bang the head in. You don't bang the head on. You bang the handle into the head from the bottom. I don't know how this works. I'm not a physicist. I'm just going to say physics is why it works. I have an understanding of why it works but not a good enough understanding to explain it to you. But you can clearly see I'm, the head is driving on to the handle because it's curling up the wood and we're going to have to take that back out here shortly and do a little bit more shaping. Not quite enough material removed. I don't have a proper drift, but I do have a large bolt that has been working phenomenally for removing uh, handles for me. I'd like to get a proper drift one day. I'm not sure it will work too well with this hand, uh, this head because this head has ridges in the eye. so. I'm not sure it would work too well for that to have a drift, but this little bolt here did the job. And just be gentle. You don't want your handle hitting the floor and potentially breaking off the palm swell or cracking the handle or what have you. Be gentle. And we'll do a little bit more shaping on this, so it should be good to go. There you can see uh, we got her there. That's what you call hanging proud um, when the handle sticks just above the eye a little bit. Uh, most people like to go about a quarter inch or so. Some people like to go more. Some people like to do a flush hang. I'm good with all three. I've done all three. Um, and then some. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, that's almost pretty much right where we want it there. Uh, next thing we'll do is test fit the wedge. Make sure it's good to go. And then we'll put some glue on it and send it home, as they say. To touch on the hanging proud and flush hang and all that stuff for just a second, my preferred method is proud about a quarter inch because what that's going to do is that um, wedge is going to drive down in there and it's going to spread the top of that wood out just a tad more 
then it would spread it out if it was a flush hang. And to me, you know, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but to me it just makes more sense to hang it proud as an added protection. And that's not to say that a flush hang wouldn't be just fine, but it just makes sense to me that it's an added protection from the head or the handle backing out or what have you. But I'll shut up now, put some glue on this thing and uh, send it home. I was on the struggle bus right here for a little bit. For some reason, my brain wouldn't tell me to just put it in the vise and tap the wedge in. I had to hold it, hold it between my thighs and try to do this. I don't know. I do dumb stuff sometimes, like we all do. But um, we're just gonna put that wedge in there and get her going. I'm sorry I didn't film this better. But what I'm doing is putting the wedge on the floor so it's a little bit more level and more even of a surface. And I'm hitting it from the bottom, which does two things in my opinion. Number one, it pounds the wedge in pretty easy, uh, evenly. And number two, if there's any more wiggle room for the head to seat, on the handle a little more it'll accomplish that too i think once again not a physicist it's just the way i think about things which could be totally wrong because like i said i do dumb stuff sometimes and once you've got a crack in it you may as well stop it's not going anywhere else um sometimes they'll mushroom out like they'll flake out like the handle does when you're putting the head on there make some wood curls but uh, this one cracked and I knew it was time to just hang it up. Then we'll use the old band saw to cut off the excess. And uh, this is of course after letting the glue dry for a little while. I let the glue dry for a good probably hour or so. Um, I ain't into having wet glue on my band saw blades. Well you'll notice too I laid a rag down um, just to protect the head from scratching. The bluing is a good protection, but it's been my experience that it scuffs and scratches easily. So I'll just put that rag down for a little protection to keep her safe. And that's about that. Next thing we'll do is put an edge on this thing and wrap this video up. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much. We're really close to 500 subscribers. Um, it goes up and down. Seems like every day. But uh, I'm really wanting to give an axe away at some point. So if we ever get to 500, we'll give one away. Probably not this one though. I'll tell you guys. <laughs> I was going to give this axe away until I realized that uh, it was a forestry service axe and my heart won't let me. But I do have something else for y'all, so we get to 500 I'll show you what I got for you. Again, this is just my method for getting an edge might not be everybody's cup of tea. I uh, used to use a file and stone and all that stuff and that works great. But this one's razor sharp. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep your edges sharp and clean. Let's be good to one another. God bless you. And until we meet again, 
Be safe out there. We'll see you on the next one.